Tonight on Q2, Flames of Fury. Wildfires continue to burn and spread in southeastern Montana. And after that, it was pretty much a ghost town around here. Those flames impacting some normally very busy businesses. Plus, searching for answers. I don't know, it just doesn't make no sense, and I just left it up to our creator. A lame deer family demanding more be done after their loved one was found dead two years ago. And what can turtles tell us? What does the water look like in all these points in the landscape? Because humans are in contact with that water too. The aquatic species on the forefront of groundbreaking research on the Yellowstone River. The MTN 530 News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. The state's largest fire, the Dead Man Fire in southeast Montana, has grown to nearly 19,000 acres. Yeah, it grew 3,000 acres since yesterday and is estimated to be 20% contained right now. That fire is burning south of Bernie and north of the Tongue River Reservoir in Rosebud and Bighorn Counties. Two other fires in the region, the Hack and Prairie have merged, reaching a combined 6,500 acres burned, and a Type 3 management team has taken control of that fire. Well, those blazes having a huge impact on businesses in the area. The Tongue River State Park and campgrounds are open, but a normally packed area is nearly empty. Our Charlie Kleps has more on how they're managing. Typically, this campground at Tongue River Reservoir would be packed in mid-July, but instead right now it's looking more like a ghost town as officials continue to fight a fire that led to a suggested evacuation over the weekend. Saturday evening is when it, it really rolled in. As the flames in the Deadman fire grew, so did the concerns. Bighorn County was out here on Saturday, Saturday night about 1030, you know, encouraging everyone to evacuate. Tongue River Marina owner Ryan Bogers had a front row seat to the response. In less than 24 hours, the nearly full campgrounds were empty. And after that, it was pretty much a ghost town around here. And that ghost town hasn't been great for his business. When you see it dwindle, dwindle down to nothing, you know it's going to be a rough day the next day. But not everyone has left the area. We just want to come out here and have a good time, make the best of it. Courtney Chase and her friends from all over the southern U.S. planned this trip to Montana months ago. And they were doing their best to still enjoy the area on Tuesday. You can still kind of make the best of it. You can't change the way the wind blows. The main thing we're worried about is having a good time, but... Everything else is all about the locals, this wind, these fires. But the flames and smoke did create an anxiousness for her group, who said that while they enjoy the lack of traffic, they also know what it means. Selfishly, we're like, hey, it's kind of nice, no one's out on the lake. But, I mean, I feel for these people that own small family-owned operations. This is a spectacular place to be, but we're just worried about y'all. That's the main thing. The evacuation level was decreased this week to just a warning for Tongue River State Park. So everything is open, but it's still a scary time for many, and a pinch certainly felt by local businesses. The word gets gets out that the park's been evacuated, and everybody thinks you know it's closed down. You know, as a business owner, you definitely feel the the effect of it. At Tongue River State Park, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. A peaceful scene with the Stockman Bank weather cam. There's still a little of that haze around, but not as much certainly as we saw yesterday afternoon. The sunshine there. Temperatures today were again a little bit warmer than average. 65 first thing in the morning and then 91, three degrees warmer than the averages we got later into the afternoon. Struggling on moisture as you're well aware across the area. Less than a quarter inch. We typically be closer to seven tenths by this point into the month of July. It's one of our drier months overall, but now running about an inch behind as far as rainfall and total moisture for the year. Temperatures today statewide were mainly into the 80s and 90s. The gold shaded number tells you the average for this time of the year. So we were typically at or warmer than average again today. A lame deer family is still seeking answers more than two years after the death of their loved one. Our Shandon knows his gun was found in the canal by the east bridge of the Yellowstone River in Lockwood in June of 2022. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office believes there's no foul play in her death, so they closed the case. But her family fears otherwise. Our Alina Howder shares their story.
It was in June of 2022 when the body of lame deer woman Arshanda knows his gun was found in a canal near the East Bridge here in Lockwood. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office has ruled out foul play, but Arshanda's family says there's more to the case than meets the eye. Two years may have passed since 38-year-old Arshanda knows his gun's death. I can't bring myself to go anywhere. It's so hard. But time has stopped for her mother, Sherry Ewing, her second eldest son, Alaren Brady, and the rest of the family. We've all been distraught. We've all been lost. And this is a painful, painful wound that's very open. The mother of five had traveled to Billings with a supposed girlfriend to see a concert at Metro Park on Saturday, June 11th. I know the girl she was with, I thought they were good friends. Arshanda didn't come home and was reported missing by her family before her body was found near the East Bridge the following Tuesday. Her clothes and her phone and everything was down north by North Park, I believe, somewhere down there. Was found later on and her phone was smashed and the Sims cards was taken out. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office said in a statement that the case is not active at this time, saying Arshanda drowned. Sheriff Mike Linder said, quote, the investigation, including the autopsy, did not reveal any signs of foul play and no new information has been received or developed that would indicate foul play. But after receiving mixed messages from the woman Arshanda was with, her uncle, Tiger Scalp Kane, a victim specialist with Northern Cheyenne Investigative Services, believes otherwise. She told her that the they got into a fight after the concert, and Arshanda took off running from her. And I was like, running. He said Arshanda had barely been able to walk without a cane after a car wreck broke her pelvis earlier that year. The family says they heard about four different versions of a similar story with various locations from the woman, even searching for their own information. I walked around the streets and seeing people, and I'm getting more information. After seeing the state of Arshanda's body, she had a big old um, bump on her left side. There was bruises all over her. They're frustrated with what they say is a lack of effort from the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office. They never interviewed anybody that was with them. They've never asked for any of this information that we've had. The family didn't even realize the case was inactive until MTN showed them Sheriff Linder's statement and hadn't received any autopsy report. Native American women are known to be targeted. My mother is not a statistic. She was a woman who cared. She was a woman who tried. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Forever chemicals are known to accumulate in water and in the organisms that use the water source. Those chemicals have links to health issues in humans, from immune disorders to cancer. Well, tonight our Haley Monaco introduces us to one group out on the Yellowstone River collecting data from a source many of us may not even realize is in our waters. When you think about the Yellowstone River, boating, floating, and fishing may all be things that come to mind. But for one group, it's the turtles in this river that they look out for. Because we're at the top of the food chain, they're a good indicator of what's happening in that ecosystem. As the iconic Yellowstone River flows through Billings, spiny softshell turtles lurk below, collecting whatever may be in the water. PFAS contaminants are they're called forever chemicals is another word for them. Recent Montana Department of Environmental Quality surveys identified the Yellowstone having elevated levels of PFAS and a need for more monitoring to be done. We eat the fish out of this river. We, our drinking water comes from this river, right? That's where Rocky Mountain College professor Kahan Ostevar and his students come in. Our goal is to use an organism that's long lived in the river it's kind of sampling the river all the time for us again as a way, as a biosentinel to assess the PFAS contaminants. Yeah, five pounds here. Trapping, weighing, tagging. Ostavar has years of experience handling thousands of turtles in the area. For this new study, they've brought along a makeshift onshore lab. If we take their blood, we can assess what's in the water by sampling their blood. And that's what this study is looking at. Occasionally in their traps, they find a surprise worth gathering data on. Oh, a 46 pound snapping turtle, the biggest they've ever caught. I've always been fascinated by reptiles because they're, they're really understudied everywhere. So this is, nobody's ever studied snapping turtles in Montana. Old creatures in our waters carrying vital information. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Montana Special Olympic athletes and Billings Police joining forces today. And they converged on McKenzie River Pizza in the Heights, serving pizza all day long. 
As our Matt Carmack reports, all that work pays off in a big way. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. If you stepped into a McKenzie River Pizza Company for a quick bite to eat this Tuesday, you might be wondering why your waiter is a police officer. Well, from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., Olympians at the Montana Special Olympics and the Billings Police Department have teamed up to fundraise over $40,000 with their Tip a Cop event. Just went on one item. Yep, that's right. This isn't a typical Tuesday for Blayton West. There you go. Oh, oh. He isn't normally the smiley face bringing your delicious lunch at McKenzie River Pizza, but this day was different. It's just good for the community for, to have it here in Billings. How's it going, guys? Yeah, how are you? Good. Sandwich? West and members of the Billings Police Department don servers uniforms today for the annual Tipikoff Special Olympics fundraiser. It's a chance to connect with and give back to the community. We've always had great success and I'm, we're happy to do it. It allows the athletes to get out outside of their, uh, to get some face time in front of the general public. At over a dozen locations across the state, the McKenzie River Pizza Company devotes an entire day to collect donations. Where you have celebrity servers, from your own community. After tipping their server like normal, customers have the option to add an above and beyond tip for their police officer and athlete servers. It's a good benefit for us to get out and help the Special Olympics of Montana as well. 100% of the proceeds stay in the state of Montana. 60% stay in the Yellowstone Valley, while 40% helps other regions supporting Special Olympics Montana which means that all the money that Blaine earns for his hard work can be used to pursue his favorite sport at the summer games this year, bowling. I do bowling, I do golf, bocce, but I like getting the strikes. Striking out in Billings, Matt Carmack, MTN News.